Hi guys, Tracy here, and uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've done a layout, so here's another scrapbooking process video for you. I'm starting with this kit from SCT Delivered, which is actually their spring card making kit. And I just took a look at the insert that comes with the kit, and I'm just having a look at all of the supplies that come in this kit. It's a really beautiful one, and I haven't had a chance to use it yet, even though it's from the spring of 2018. And uh, I picked out a couple of cards that I thought I might want to make from inside of the insert. They have a couple of different ideas from the design team. And so I made sure to set aside some of the supplies that I might need for those cards. Um, but I really want to make a scrapbooking page out of this card making kit. And this is one of my favorite things to do with the SCT delivered card making kit is to make a page or two and then also make some cards with it. So I really wanted to scrapbook this picture from a recent outing that we had at our aunt and uncle's house. And uh, my family members are there playing croquet. I was playing too, but I just kind of took a picture here. And I started off with the idea that I would use these three 12 by 12 patterned papers from the card making kit and perhaps that little flare badge with the green on it. And I'm also having a look at the six by six paper pad that came in this kit. It's the Paige Evans Pick Me Up Collection by Pink Paisley. And what I really love about this paper pad is how it has these beautiful rich colors that uh, really work with the croquet theme. Actually, the more I was looking through the paper pad, the more I thought I would want to pick out some colors in blue, green, red, and yellow because, and my, I'm kind of taking a little bit of liberty with the red and making it be a very dark pink, but uh, those are the colors of the croquet um, post that is really front and center in the photo here. And everybody is sort of clustered around it in the background and in the foreground around that croquet. Um, oops, I trimmed that down a little bit too small. So I thought I would take my colors from the game of croquet as well as from my photo, although it's really more from the game of croquet. Those those colors do show up in the photo in that they are in that little, um, what is that called? The little stick that you have to hit? The post, maybe? Uh, anyhow, the colors are in the photo, but it's really more about these are the colors of the game of croquet. So you see I have a, we're going to call it red for the purposes of this video, a red pattern paper, a blue pattern paper, and a yellow pattern paper from that same Paige Evans paper pad. And I just wanted to make those flowers be oriented. They do have an up and a down. The, all, the, all of the stems go one way. So I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't upside down. And I just did a combination of tearing and cutting of those main pattern papers. And then I thought green could be my background. That's the green paper. I think it's, yeah, it's from Doodlebug Designs that came in the kit. But I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not sure if that might be too light of a green. So then I thought I would take out buttons. And once I got my buttons out, I noticed that I have uh, the same button in these four colors that go along with the croquet game. And they're all from Stampin' Up! And I really love how they look. And I love how they mimic, especially when I stack them on top of each other like that. They look a lot like the post in that I, I made sure that I ordered them in the same order that the stripes are on the post. And I think that that's really going to pick up on my theme of the colors of croquet for this page. So I do need to change my background because I want, I, I didn't need to, but I really wanted something that was going to coordinate and pick up on, coordinate with and pick up on the green grass in the photo and also be more of the same color green that the button is and also that the actual color is in the game. Because it's kind of a forest green and I didn't want to go with such a dark dark green but I did want something darker than the fairly light pastel-y green that was there. So now I've switched out, I ended up not using any of those 12 by 12 um, papers from the kit, but I did use many of the papers from the six by six pad in the kit. Now I'm thinking that because these patterns are quite 
busy and they're all fairly dark and I'm, I'm feeling like I want to brighten this layout up a little bit so I'm actually going to although I've already put them all together in the layers that I want I'm actually going to tear them all apart and do a little bit of white matting around them sometimes I'll do this in white and sometimes I'll do this in black it's a really nice way to give your patterned papers a bit of a pop in between your layers to really emphasize the difference in your patterns and to also kind of pull them all together. All of these patterns are quite different from one another even though they do coordinate nicely they come from the same paper pack so we know they match but I want to pull them together even more and doing that really helps that. So I want to, to also put a white mat around the outside edge of this, but I want it to be fairly small. So instead, usually when I put a white border or any kind of border around the outside edges of a layout, I take off a half an inch on two adjacent sides so that I have a quarter inch all the way around. In this case, I'm taking a quarter inch off of two adjacent sides. So I end up with an eighth of an inch around the outside. And I just had to position that. And now I'm really liking how this looks. It gives it a bit more of a clean, crisp look as opposed to just layering the papers by themselves. Either look is lovely, but I really like this look for today. So I just positioned those back and I actually positioned them a little bit differently so that the blue paper is more offset like it's hanging out on the right hand side and the other two papers the yellow and the red are more kind of like lined up and aligned over on the left hand side. So I'm thinking what else might I want to do with this that's what that little finger wiggle was that's my brain working and I'm kind of thinking what embellishments am I going to use. And I'm also thinking I'm going to leave room for my title, which I'm not sure what it will be at this point. And so I think I'm going to push everything over to the left hand side like this. And I thought about tearing off that top layer again. And the reason I did that is I want to do some sewing on it. And I really don't want to sew with this, especially with this small machine, which isn't as powerful as a big one, um, through all of those layers. So I pulled that off again. The nice thing about scrapbooking is that you can always pull things apart if you need to. My machine wasn't sewed. I try to keep my machine always ready to go. All I have to do is pull it down. I keep it on the shelf right next to where I scrapbook and then I can just pull it down when I need it and I keep it all plugged in and the foot pedal is right under my desk where it needs to be and all I have to do is plug it in and start going. But in this case I also had to thread my needle. <laughs> So I'm going to take this sewing all the way around the outside edge of this paper. This green paper that I went with for my background, by the way, is a really old paper from my stash from Cosmo Cricut. And the designer strip tells me that it's from 2009, which is actually when I started scrapbooking, and it's from the collection called Early Bird. And I really love the wonky striped pattern on it. It uh, brings a lot of whimsy and fun energy to the page, which is otherwise quite predictable with the all the rectangular boxes and matting, and it's very aligned <laughs> and perpendicular. So uh, I really like I really like the contrast that that background paper brings. And when combining pattern papers like this, I really like to make sure that there's something energetic. At least one pattern has a good amount of, of energy or whimsy or something fun that it brings to the page. So I am also sewing around the outside edge of this photo. These are two very, very small details that really, in the grand scheme of the page, don't make a huge a whole lot of, of impact but they are those kind of final details although I am doing them early in the page they really uh, do make a page look pulled together so it's one of those things that if you hate sewing obviously you don't have to sew on your pages but it is a really nice detail I find that when I've sewn on my page it has more of a finished look at the end 
So I pulled over my RASCOG and shared this other angle with you so that you could see some of my process of how I store my letter stickers and also how I go about picking them out. So I do have them ordered by color. And so I started with my multicolored thickers and picked out a couple of those. And then I went to my reds because I love red and red is one of those colors in the croquet game. And I found this really funky font that I really love. Now it's glitter and it doesn't really go with my theme, which is more earthy and less showy. Um, but I really, really love the font. And I think that the word croquet will look gorgeous in that red and brown font. The color scheme just doesn't work and the glitter doesn't work. So I do also have these other letter stickers. These are called Magic and they are from American Crafts as well. And so I'm kind of trying to decide here. For a second there, I thought I might orient those layers differently. And then I decided to spell out the word croquet. Isn't that just a fabulous font? And so as I'm spelling out the word croquet, it, it, it doesn't not work. Like I could have gone with this. And I'm thinking I could also do something to cover up the top. Like you could, I could paint over that glitter and it would end up with just like a really um, bumpy kind of texture. Or I could even just peel off the top layer and, and expose the unfinished chipboard below and then do something on that, like paint it or do something. Uh, but I'm ultimately going to decide that that other font of letter stickers is going to work quite a bit better. Both in that I just didn't feel like doing those things and, you know, scrapbooking for me is a hobby and so I want to be able to enjoy the process and I, I just didn't, it, I wasn't feeling it. And also I just wasn't sure if I was going to like the size of that, of that font. So I went online and searched for croquet puns. And surprisingly, there aren't many of them. But one thing that I did see was a t-shirt that said, OK Croquet. And I thought that was really fun. So I don't, so I'm, I'm making my letters go in the same order, which is blue and then green and then yellow and then red. And the word OK fits that, but then Croquet is obviously too longer. Now, I didn't have a Q in red, so but I did have an O. So I just used the O and then I cut a piece from another letter to make the little uh, dangly thing on the Q. And at first I thought I might stack them like this. That gives me nice, even, um, you know, pattern. And it looks really cute like that. But I'm going to end up deciding to do it different than this. Differently. Just, I, I don't know. I have a hard time breaking up a letter like that. I know I see lots of people do it and it looks great when they do it. But I can never bring myself to actually stack a word in that way. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it. So I like that a lot better and I'm going to shift my layers down a little bit to compensate for the fact that my title is going to take up quite a bit of space above those layers. And now I pulled out my Sharpie marker, which is a permanent marker. Any permanent marker would do. You could probably use alcohol markers for this as well. And I'm just coloring over that light blue so that my, it was a kind of like a greenish blue. It's really, it's blue. It's not greenish blue. Uh, so anyhow. And I'm very carefully putting these dots in exactly the same spots that the dots are on the letter. Because I don't want it to look messy and I don't want it to stand out too much as looking different from the other letters. It is, now when you use markers as opposed to paints or other things to cover a letter sticker, uh, I really like the control that you get with a letter, with a, with a, with a pen or a marker. But one of the downsides is that you are a lot more likely to get streaking and to see your little pen strokes. And so I'm trying to go along with the shape of the letter so that it minimizes the number of strokes that show. And look at that. It looks so great. It looks just like the color of the grass. And I love it. <laughs> So there I am just following the shape of the E so that I don't get those brush strokes. And I am going over each of these letters twice to get a nice thick coating of green marker. 
And like I said, I chose marker as opposed to paint or something else because I just felt like I have more control. I have a whole lot of different colors of those Sharpie markers, so I do tend to pull them out and use them for personalizing and changing things a lot because they do stick to almost anything and they are permanent. So it's not going to come off and stick to my page protector in my in my scrapbook and make a big mess on everything. So I'll save those other letters for another time. I just left the word croquet on the waxed paper <laughs> in case I ever scrapbook about croquet again, which is not very likely, but uh, you never know. So I'm just putting my letter stickers away, trying to not have too much of a mess on my table at once. I did keep out those other uh, letter stickers up there, those chipboard letter stickers, because I thought I might use them on my secondary cluster. So as I was spelling out OK Croquet, um, I started to get the idea that I might want the title and the main part of this layout aligned over on the left hand side and then have a secondary cluster on the top right hand side to balance that out. And so I'm going back and I'm trying to find the exact same papers, but it just so happens that there is only one of that really cool pink slash red background paper that I have. It's not really background, but the, the bottom layer there. There's only one of those in that in that whole book. Usually there's three of everything, but there isn't. I checked and checked and checked. <laughs> and so luckily one of those uh papers has that same pattern as a strip so I'm just going to place it so that it looks like it's a big piece but it's mostly hanging off the edge and uh, I'm just going to I want this to be I guess analogous to the one in the bottom but not identical so I didn't want to layer the papers in exactly the same order but I did want each of those patterns to definitely be represented there so and also to make it be the same as the one as the larger one, I'm going to mat all of these in white cardstock. So this does add a little bit of time to your scrapbooking process, but I think it's really worth it. I love the crisp look that you get with matting your pattern papers. And I really like also how the torn edge sometimes hangs down over your matting. So I just pulled it up so that I didn't trim off the cut the the torn edge of that blue paper just to allow it to hang over it just it, whenever you interrupt something like that it just adds a little bit of interest i'm talking softly today because my um family is sleeping it's 6 a.m <laughs> and it's a weekend so everybody's sleeping in which is good except for me i can't sleep in <laughs> I don't know. Give me a thumbs up if you're a non-sleeper inner. We are cut from the same cloth if you're a non-sleeper inner. <laughs> I can totally relate to you. So here we go, uh, putting in that secondary cluster. I like how it looks. And I just dangled that red piece down a little bit. Again, just trying to add something a little bit unexpected and to make it look not too symmetrical. It does have a bit of a symmetrical feel to it, especially the top one. Now, because the top one kind of hangs off the edge of the page, I'm going to make the bottom cluster also hang off the edge of the page. So I positioned it, or I tried to position it, such that I could just trim off that white border that I had placed around the red piece of paper. Now I did miss some of it up in the top. I just didn't position it over far enough or straight enough, but that's okay. It mostly looks like it's hanging off the edge. I think you, I think you get that impression that it's hanging off the edge of the page. Now I thought I could use this. I'm using that piece of white cardstock there as a placeholder for some type of journaling thing that I'm going to put there. I don't know what it is yet, but, uh, I also cut out a embellishment from just a little cut apart sheet in that six by six paper pad that I've been using all along from the kit. And now I'm also going into my stash to get some chipboard. And I keep my chipboard in these little 
cases. They're sorted by color. And I really like how this one, which is a very old Dear Lizzie piece of chipboard, it picks up on that red pattern paper in the bottom layer, even though it's a completely different collection from a completely different time. It really does look like it coordinates really well with that. That little tiny birdhouse looks a lot like that little tiny house that we're playing beside. It's actually their little pool shed thing where they keep all their pool supplies and stuff and so I thought that that was really cute there I'm also oh look at this I think that that's even better so I'm going to put that up in the top I'm thinking I might actually do my journaling on top of that little house which is an unusual thing for me to do but I think I'm going to go with it so I pulled out a couple of different options for green chipboard and now I'm just going through my blue chipboard this one looks like it might be a nice home for the for the buttons, but nope, it's just too small. And plus, I really like the buttons just as they are. They have this nice, crisp, clean look to them. Now I'm picking out some flat die cuts. So I left my chipboard drawer, and now I'm in my die cut pieces drawer. And so these are all mostly flat. There's some dimensional stuff just stuck in the same. Uh, they're also colored by... They're also sorted by color, so I'm grabbing my red. I really like how that October afternoon piece looks underneath of that, that house, which is probably a Maggie Holmes house or something from Crepe Paper. And I think that that blue leaf is from Amy Tangerine. I don't know where the tickets are from. This is a little handmade embellishment made from punches and, and patterned papers. A YouTube viewer sent me a whole bunch of those many, many years ago, and I'm still using them after all these years. And I really love that Remember camera piece, which I'm pretty sure is from Amy Tangerine as well. And so I'm just, as I'm making these two clusters, one beside the photo and one up in the top secondary cluster, I'm just being mindful of having representation from all four of those colors in each of my clusters. I want a little bit of green. These are both from October afternoons, these two tags that I'm sticking in, uh, on one on the top and one on the bottom or tabs, I guess not tags. And then I noticed I have these little tiny die cut hearts and I die cut them for a project that I did a very long time ago out of green felt with my die like with um, a set a, I think it was a Simon Says stamp die and uh, I just kept those little off cuts they were really really sweet and I thought they'd make cute little embellishments so I'm using these little felt hearts in place of enamel dots on this layout so just something that fun that I can kind of sprinkle around the page and kind of pull the piece together, bring your eye around to different places. And also because they're felt, they have um, some nice texture to them that's different than everything else that's on the page. I'm going to layer this house so that it falls off the edge of the page. Again, that red piece is from October afternoon. It's a very old piece. And I like how that layers together. It looks nice. It brings some nice red up there. And I'm not too... I'm not being too fussy about the combination here of pink and red. I'm basically using pink, that very, very, very dark pink, and it's almost like a raspberry color, and red interchangeably. And as long as I've spread it around the page, it works. So if I had if I was using mostly that dark pink interpretation of red and only one place where there was actual red it would look weird like it would stand out but as long as i have some of the dark pink and some of the red spread around the pages the page in different places that's the key to making that kind of a thing work it's the same when you combine uh, white and cream so so anything that seems like it doesn't match can be brought together as long as you do it purposely and in different places so I really wanted to layer these two pieces of chipboard together. This one says frolic and fun because we're, you know, frolicking and having fun in the grass. And uh, I like how that looks. These little tiny felt hearts are just adorable. I'm so glad I noticed them in that big case filled with green things. 
And usually I add these sorts of details at the very end, but in this case, I'm just adding them as I go because just because I'm thinking about it. So I did do some work up in the top corner there that you wouldn't have seen because I didn't realize I was zoomed out so much, but I'll pull it down so you can see it. There you go. So basically I just added a little heart in the center of the door of that little house up there. So now I'm going to place these letter stickers and it is a good idea to reinforce whenever you're using chipboard thickers, it's a good idea to reinforce it with a little bit of liquid glue like Tombow Mono Multi adhesive is a good one to use or even the Tombow Aqua adhesive would be fine. I am not doing this in this case. Uh, I thought I would just give it a try. So what I sometimes do is I'll just put them down with the adhesive that they come with and then I'll just see if any seem to be lifting or loose and then I'll go back and reinforce the ones that I need to. I decided to add a comma after OK and I needed it in the blue because blue comes after red in this world. So there we go, just adding my last two little felt hearts. So now I have felt hearts actually in four places, but there, two of them are in the same cluster. So there's, there's a felt heart, at least one in each of my, I guess really not three clusters, but if you're counting the title as a cluster, then it's three. I'm just going to layer that little tag. I did put the date on. I used Narwhal ink and my roller date stamp. Narwhal from, from Lawn Fawn. And now I'm going to do some journaling right here. I have two sets of journaling I'm going to do. This one I'm doing in, by hand and I'm writing out, Fee reintroduced us to croquet. It's like golf, but fun. Which is another quote that I found when I looked up croquet puns. There was a little Dennis the Menace cartoon where uh, Dennis was talking to his friend and, and trying to, to teach her how to play croquet. And I thought that was funny because I don't like golf at all, <laughs> but I do like croquet. So now I have to decide what am I going to do with those buttons? And because this yellow piece of paper is already on my page, I don't really want to take off everything and pull it out in order to be able to sew these in place. So what I thought I would do is tie bows on them. And then I thought, one of the things that I really like about this page is how clean and crisp it is. It's like a combination of clean and crisp along with the nice layers that I usually go with in my pages. So I thought adding bows to this is really going to clutter it up. It's going to bring your eye over to those buttons just a little bit too much. And so I decided I would just tie a simple knot instead. And I'm trimming my knot, the, like the little ends of my knot, so that they are contained within the circumference or the diameter, I guess, of the button. So I don't want my little legs of extra string here <laughs> to be sticking out beyond the outside edge of the button is what I'm trying to say. There you go. I'm using Stampin' Up! White Twine for this. I really love Stampin' Up! White Twine and I really need to, as soon as I get a package of it, I need to take it off of its can off of its cardboard and wrap it around something round so that it loses those chunky edges. I don't like the the elbows that 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 string tends to get. String should not have elbows. Only people should have elbows. And so here we go. I'm just using some glue dots to apply these to my page. Ooh, I really like how it's looking. And I like how it's not like an in-your-face primary colors layout. It does use the primary colors, but it's not like an in-your-face and doesn't look like it's a, an elementary school layout about school or anything like that, which sometimes when you use primary colors, it can have that, that juvenile look. There's nothing wrong with the juvenile look, but um, I didn't want this page to have it. <laughs> So I just have to do a little bit of tidying up here because I needed to make room for my We Are Memory Keepers Typecast Typewriter. And I really love this because it's very, very pretty in my room, like gorgeous. I really love it. And uh, it works really well for me. 
So it is important to get your paper under those rollers. I was trying to cheat a little bit and type without the rollers, but I knew I wouldn't get the kind of print that I wanted. So I just moved my paper up. I was afraid that I would run out of space, but I ended up, it, there was plenty of space. As you can see, I am typing on a very tiny strip, on a very tiny scrap. I'll let you know what I'm typing out here. It says, a day at VM Brian's is always a treat. Pool time, catching up, laughing, all the important stuff is what I typed out there. Eventually I'll type out all that. So I really do love my Typecast typewriter. Uh, if you're thinking about buying it, I would go online and have a look at the reviews. There have been a lot of reviews on this typewriter and they have been mixed. So it's important to know what uh, other crafters think of a tool before you buy it. So I encourage you to do your research before you buy any tool, really. Uh, but I've had great experience with my typewriter. So that's all that I can comment on is my own experience. So I did make a little mistake there with uh, my typing. I put a comma when I meant to put an, a, an apostrophe. And so I tried to use a, a little corrector tape there, but it wasn't sticking to the place I needed it to stick. So I just used my gel pen to cover over the little comma. And uh, I'm going to play around with where I might want to put these strips, not down here, but I thought I'd just give it a try just to see. It's too close to the other journaling. And also, I mean, the journaling is the whole reason for the top cluster. So if I don't put my journaling on it, it seems a lot more decorative and less useful. And I wanted it to, you know, serve a purpose up there as well as being pretty. So the other option is to do a little bit of journaling at the top and a little bit of journaling at the bottom, but no, I'm going to, I'm going to put them all over my cute, adorable little chipboard house. And I don't often do this, but I really like the look and I'm being strategic here so that I'm not covering any of the main, like any of the important lines on this house that define it as a house. So I don't want to cover over that pretty scalloped edge where the roof meets the house. And I also didn't want to put it over the edge where the house kind of leaves into the sky, like at the very, very top. And then I put la laughing just fit perfectly right there beside the door. And now this one, I'm just going to put right under the house like that. And I did have to glue two little strips together in order to make them the right lengths that I needed them to be. And I just gave it a little haircut there on the side, trim off the little ends. And I think that that might be it for this page. Yes, it is. There we go. So I did think about splatter, but one of the things that I really love about this page is how clean and crisp it looks. And if I added splatter, it would take away from the nice clean, crisp look. I almost never use splatter when I go for that uh, white matted look because the white matted look really does make it look very crisp and very structured and organized. And although splatters might be a nice way to offset that, I always just want to kind of go with it. And so here's the overall photos. I've been taking photos with my iPhone instead of with my DSLR for my ending uh, of my videos. And I'm kind of struggling with getting it right. But uh, here are the photos that I have for you today. I hope that my photography will improve. If it doesn't, I'll just go back to my DSLR. It's just so much easier to use my phone. So here they are. I really love how those buttons look. And really nice to dig into my stash. This layout was a combination of items from the from the kit and really the kit was the inspiration for this layout. And even though I did go into my stash for pretty much all of the embellishments and the letters and so on, it was a really nice jumping off point and it was nice to kind of get a start on using the kit. And I'll go back and make some cards. So thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe to my video so that you don't miss any of my process videos and check out these other videos below. Take care and have a really great scrappy week.